part three, and we are talking about factoring techniques. Woohoo! Yay! And this is the third part because the other two parts got too long. So, woohoo! We've got two more examples I want to go over. And the first one is right here. Woohoo! Well, this, they're both right here, actually. They're both, yeah. So, no surprises. Spoilers, sorry. Number seven is that one. But don't worry about it right now. Let's just worry about number six. So number six, we want to take a look at this and say, okay, first thing, let's find some common factors. Now I noticed that this one's extra long. As I'm looking at it, I see one, two, three, four terms. So there's more going on. And um, common factors can be very tricksy, especially for me. So I have to kind of talk it out. I see that I have a three and an X here. So 3 and x are pretty much the only options for common factors because 3 is prime. Now 3 does go into 12, but there's no x in this one. So just looking, let me steal this, just looking at those first two terms, I can see that the only thing that could be common is the number 3. Now let's look here. And I see that even though these two only have three in common, there's no number, there's no constant. Well, that's a lie, right? Because it's a one, you can't see it. But there's no three here. And so I realize, oh, there's no common factors in this, even though it looks like my brain is telling me, oh, there are A's and X's everywhere, it should be common. And the answer is there aren't. So let's go ahead and look at what to do in case of a four term polynomial. There are four terms. Pretty much our option is grouping. So let's go ahead and try some grouping with this one. Remember, grouping is the one where you go ahead and again, I'm going to rewrite it. I always rewrite problems to start them so that I always have a clean version. I've got the written version there that I can double check. If you start working with that one that's typed up, there's always the chance that if you make a mistake and need to go back, you know, you won't be able to exactly see what was there. So I always rewrite it. You don't have to, of course, this is just part of my style. Grouping is the technique that what you're going to try to do is instead of trying to find a common factor for the whole thing, you're going to look at pieces and see if you can kind of break down the pieces and then see if that fingers crossed, gets lucky. So I'm going to look at the first two terms. And remember, we already talked about this. I saw that there was a three common to both. So just for this first, let's see if I can do this without going to Smeary Town. Just for this first two terms, I see that I can factor out a three and I leave an X plus and then three I had 12. If I factor out three, I get four. So X plus four in there. Okay. And then I'm going to look to my second set of terms. And I'm going to see that I have, let's see, AX squared. So it's AXX. And this is plus four AX. So I think A is common to both. And X is common to both. So let's take a look at what I get when I factor out. If I factor out AX from here, remember this is AXX. So if I factor out the A and the X, I still have one more X left over. And then in the second term, if I factor out the A and the X, I just have the four left over. And here is the beautiful, wonderful, miraculous, lucky, yay, it's going to work moment where these two, the x plus 4 factor here and the x plus 4 factor here, they match. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and factor these out. And I usually factor them to the right, but you can factor it in either direction. So I'm going to factor out the x plus 4. And remember when we're factoring out, it's kind of like summarizing. So what I'm saying is I had 3 times x plus 4, so I put the 3 in here. And I had ax times x plus 4, so I put the ax in there. So basically I'm saying 
x plus 4 is multiplied by 3, and x plus 4 is multiplied by ax, so I'm summarizing the whole thing. And in doing so, 3 plus ax, x plus 4, I'm so excited I wrote it a second time, our factoring is done. Now remember that sometimes it doesn't work, and if it doesn't work your first try, you could always take some of these terms and flip them around. So you can move the terms around in different places and then try again. Grouping can sometimes take multiple tries. We just got lucky. Yay! Yay, Mindy Dance Party. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. And I've been putting off this one because, wow, that one looks a little intimidating. Sharktopus is even trying to leave. No getting out of the Sharktopus. We're going to do this. Okay. So first things, always, always, let's look to see if there's anything common. Now, this one makes it easy for me because I've got one term that just has an 8. So there's no way I'm going to be able to factor out an A or a B. And then I think, okay, does 8 have anything in common with 42? And the answer is, yeah, 2. 2 goes into 42 and 8. Anything else? No, no. 4 doesn't go into 42. 8 doesn't go into 42. So they have 2 in common. Can I factor 2 out of 27? No, I can't. So there are no common factors. Yeah. I love common factors because they make the numbers smaller. The next thing I notice as I'm looking at this is I notice that the squared term, the a squared, b squared, is kind of tucked in the middle. And it should be there. It should be front in front. So I'm going to write it first. Remember, you can always change the order of terms because we have something called the commutative property of addition. <laughs> so I switched those two around. See how I switched them around? I changed their order. And now I'm seeing that I have a three term polynomial, a trinomial. And I'll remind you that for trial and error, I have, I'm oh, sorry, for three terms, I have trial and error, the AC method or the X method. And I think for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and try the AC method because we, we did trial and error in the, in the previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and take the, oh, you can't see that. Let's see. Ooh, magically moving things around. Okay. So this is, I should probably note this right here. This is the AC method. There we go. Okay. Just in case you're um, doing a screenshot to hold on to this. So here's the AC method, and this is a way of factoring trinomials that is a little bit faster than trial and error. But again, as I mentioned previously, it helps you get through this problem, but it doesn't necessarily make you faster for factoring in the future, right? So it's the trade-off is, is if you do the hard work, you get better at it. If you take shortcuts, you go faster, but you don't always get better. So you get to choose, but I thought I would show you how to do this one. So notice that this AX squared, oops, sorry, AX squared plus BX plus C, this is slightly different, right? What we have here is 27 times AB, the quantity squared, plus 42 times AB plus 8. So AB is now like our x was. So this is this is fancy. This is why this is the last one. This is the hard one, right? This is the one we're really going to work hard to get to. Okay, so in this, now the problem is, is I've got an A there, but then also part of the AC test or the AC method, I've also got an A. And I'm going to have to say something that sounds ridiculous, which is this A and this A, not the same A. I know. I know, this is very, very confusing. So the numbers I'm interested in are 27, 42, and 8. And to differentiate, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say capital A, capital B, and capital C. I'll use capitals for these because these, this is the first, this is the coefficient of the first term, this is the coefficient of the second term, and this is the coefficient of the third term. 
Now, the AC method says we have to multiply A times C, which in this case is going to be kind of gruesome. That's 27 times 8. And I am regretting that I have hidden my calculator from myself. There we go. Okay, calculator time. Pardon me, Sharktopus. I'm going to move you up there. There we go. Let's go ahead and... Ooh, what was I doing yesterday? 27 times 8 is 216. Oh, man, that's a big number. Okay. 216. Yay, 216. And then the B is 42. So remember to use this method if you choose to use this method. You could also, you could look at this and say... You could look at this and say, oh my goodness, um, this is too complicated. I'm just going to use trial and error. So feel free to use trial and error on this one. I'm just going to keep going here and, and cross my fingers that I can actually figure this one out. So remember what we're going to do is we're going to take the first coefficient, the coefficient of the leading term and the constant coefficient, the first and the last, and multiply them together. And then I take the middle coefficient and just write it by itself. And then the first coefficient is going to be secret number times secret number. And I'm going to use the same colors I use in my... Ooh, that's really squeaky. Not as squeaky. Yeah, this is an extra squeaky. What kind is this? Ooh, isn't that fancy? A foray. And then this, the 42, is going to be these two secret numbers added together. There we go. There's my blue one. And there is my, oh my gosh, all the squeaky. Okay. So what I've got to do is I've got to come up with two numbers that when multiplied give me 216, but when added give me 42. Okay, and so what I'm going to go ahead and do is move on to another page because I think that's really what I need to do. Oh, there we go. You can tell I'm an artist. Oh, look at that. <sighs> okay, so this is number seven. Woohoo. So number seven, we are at the point where we know 216 is equal to the secret number times the secret number, and 42 is equal to the secret number plus the secret number. And some squeakies. Squeaky, 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 squeaky. And then the less squeaky. Oh my goodness, Sharktopus, it's, it's just all. I started using a different video camera and everything is just wah, all over the place. Okay, so now we need to find these numbers. So, yay. Here goes. Now, in this case, the AC method and uh, trial and error seem very similar because we have to come up with two numbers that multiply to 216, but then add to 42, which we didn't get. Okay, 2 times, was it 108? When we add them, is 110. Now, we're getting closer, right? We're less than, we're around half. And then, does 3 go into 216? Let's check. 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 6 is 9. Yes, 3 goes into 9. 3 goes into 216. And I believe that's 72. We're getting closer. We're looking for, remember, the magic number is 42. So does 4 go into 216? I believe it does, but, I mean, you don't have to take my word for it. We can just say divide it by 4. Yep, 54. Ooh, we're getting really close. I'm very excited. Okay, 5. I don't think 5 goes into 216. 6. Let's check. 216 divided by 6 is 36. And, oh my goodness... Are you guys excited? I'm so excited. My rabbit is excited. Galaxy the cat is excited. He doesn't know why. But oh my gosh, we did it. 
We found the numbers. So we're done with the problem. Yay! And no, we're not. That was that was fun though, briefly. We're not done with the problem. So now, what's the next step in the AC method? Let's look here. So remember that what you do is now that you found your secret number, 6 and 32, that when you multiply, you get to 216, and when you add, you get to 42. So my numbers are going to be 6 and 36. Now, I hear you worried. I hear you saying, what if I got it in the opposite order? What if 36 is my yellow number and 6 is my blue number? And I'm going to say, you know what? The magical thing is... It works either way. It works either way. So my yellow one was six, my blue one was 36. I could reverse them. Don't worry about that. It'll work in both orders. So now take a look at what we're supposed to do. So basically we take the middle term and we split it. What the heck does that mean? Well, let's go back to, can we see this? You can kind of see this right there. See where I had, I had 27 AB, the quantity squared, plus 42 AB plus eight. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split 42. So I get 27 AB, the quantity squared, yes, yes. And then I do, instead of 42 AB, I do six, AB plus 36 AB plus 8. So take a look at that. 42 splits up. See, see how clever I am? Yellow plus blue makes green. Oh my gosh. Look at that. 42 splits up into 6 plus 36 because 6 plus 36 equals 42. So we just spread it out. And now we've made a one, two, three, four term polynomial. So what we're going to do now is use grouping. Yay! I'm going to stop drawing the parentheses. I think it's going to make it a little easier. We can group the first two and the last two. Let's see. Okay, the first two, 27 is three times nine, six is three times two. I've got a common factor of three, plus I've got a bunch of ABs. So I'm gonna factor out three AB, and I'm gonna get nine AB, right? Because there are two of them, there are two ABs, AB times AB. So I factor out one, I got one left. And then here I've got nine AB, and then if I factor out three AB, all I have is left is two. And then over here, 36 AB plus eight. Okay, it's just gonna be a number. Um, two goes into both of them. Does four go into both of them? Yes, four goes into both of them. And I'm left with nine AB plus two. And now, oh my goodness, what amazing luck. Now, if you follow the AC method, it, you will always get lucky like this. It will work. If you can find these magic numbers, the whole thing will work out. Sometimes you can't find the magic numbers. Then you're, you've probably got a prime. You've either made a mistake or you've got a prime polynomial. Okay, let me do that weird collection where these two get collected to the right. So I get 3AB and then plus 4, that comes from over here, times 9AB plus 2. I collect them together like that. And that's it. That's our whole problem. Oh my gosh, guys, you know what happened? We just finished the impossible fi impossible problem. We dreamed the impossible dream. We lectured the impossible lecture. We're done. That's the answer. Oh my goodness, dance party. Okay, so that's it. Go out, factor. Live your lives. Sorry, cough. <coughs> cough if you want to. Uh, eat your vegetables. Get a little vitamin D. Get a little exercise. Get a lot of sleep.